I'm Stephanie Sloop, and today I'm here with Chuck McGaha, Director of Emergency Management, and we're here to talk about burning season. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, there, there's a lot that we need to understand when we talk about burning. Um, you know, it's that time of the season, and usually it lasts till about mid-April. Um, right now is a crucial part that uh, those that are wanting to conduct uh, an open burn of some sort, and when we talk about open burning, uh, that's anything that's not contained within a 55-gallon drum. Now, the, within the county, and the cities are different, within the county, you're allowed to burn in a burn barrel, but you've got to have a screen on the top of it. Um, what I think people also need to realize is that you're responsible. As soon as you strike that match or light that lighter, you're responsible for that fire until it goes out. And uh, that's what I think a lot of people don't really realize, that once it leaves their property, whatever damage it does, they're, they're going to have to pay for it in some shape, form, or another. So when we look at uh, the burning season, uh, right now it's, it's, it's a burning season that we can control, and we control that uh, to a certain fashion and by educating people. And when we say educating people, there's a lot of things that uh, the general public needs to take and account for. And when I say account for, we're talking about proper clothing. You know, they need to wear cotton uh, shirts and pants. They need to wear boots, not tennis shoes or sandals. They need to wear uh, eye protection, need to wear hand protection, and something to cover their head. And when I say something to cover their head, a ball cap usually works. But I look at uh, our folks out there with, with longer hair, they need to stuff it inside the back of their shirts to keep it from dangling out. Um, does this go for when we burn brush piles? Most certainly. You know, when we talk about fires that are getting uh, 14 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, um, we don't realize that that's happening until it's too late. And uh, we want to make sure that we're protected to the best of our ability. Um, with, with that in mind, we also need to make sure that we have proper equipment. And when I say proper equipment, uh, we've talked about personal protective equipment. Now we're talking about more than just a rake. You need more than, uh, you need manpower. When I say manpower, depending on how large your burn's going to be, uh, if it's something that you're doing just within your backyard and have a brush pile, you might be looking at just a couple people that are uh, keeping an eye on the brush pile, and then um, you need to have a water supply of some sort. Whether it's uh, a tank on the back of a truck, whether it's a five-gallon bucket, <clears throat> or whether it's a uh, garden hose, uh, the more water, the better. Uh, I don't think people realize how much water it takes to put out uh, a fire. Um, re regardless, uh, we, if a fire gets away from you, of course, um, you, you need to call 911 as quick as possible. So when we look at equipment, um, you know, a good flat shovel works because you can actually beat the fire out. You're taking away the oxygen when you do that. Um, if it's in a grass fire, uh, a pitchfork if it's in a uh, brush pile so you can keep moving the product away from the outer edges and back into the middle. And your brush pile shouldn't be any more than uh, you can handle at any given time. Um, that's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. The most important thing is, is that you need to be able to get yourself a burn permit. And the burn permits are issued countywide uh, within the unincorporated areas of the county. Now some of the cities have adopted our burn permits. And I say our burn permits, it's through the Sheriff's Office. This was something that was designed uh, through the Sheriff's Office and coordinated with uh, the Fire Association, which is made up of all the fire departments in the county, and uh, as well as uh, the Emergency Management Office. And it's a simple process. If burning is allowed, when you go to the Sheriff's website, and it's lvsheriff.org, um, when you're looking across the banner, there's a spot in there that you can click on and go to burn permits. And when we look at the burn permits, it's going to tell you right there on that very front page if burning's allowed or not. If it's not allowed, it's going to be what we call redded out. It's going to be red and it's not going to show that we're allowed to burn. It's going to tell you the reason or rationale why it's not uh, allowed. Um, so if it's allowed, you go to the part where it says submit a burn permit. Uh, you put in your name, your address, um, your email address. Uh, the email address is actually going to be your proof that you got a burn permit. Uh, put in your phone number, um, what you intend to burn, what time you intend to burn, and uh, how long uh, you plan on this uh, going through the process. We do that for a number of different reasons. One, 
is that it spells out in that burn permit that one, you're not allowed to burn anything that's going to produce black smoke. So we're talking tires, we're talking about plastics, we're talking about treated lumber, and the list goes on and on. So once that individual hits that submit button, they have agreed to all the fine print, and I say fine print, it's pretty well laid out of what's involved in that burning permit when they issue that. Um, once they submit it, uh, which goes to the sheriff's office, the sheriff's office has a, a list of all the burn permits in the county, and then each individual fire department has that same ability to go through and look at that as well. And that goes into an Excel spreadsheet. That email also goes back to, um, as a burn permit submitted, to all the fire chiefs within the county. Each fire chief has the capability of looking at a burn permit within their township. When they look at that, they can say that, hey, I approve this going on or I don't approve this. Uh, and I say that if we have 40 burn permits for one township, township fire chief might say, hey, the winds are going to pick up this afternoon. I think I'm going to cut off burn permits. So no more burn permits. And they have that latitude to be able to do that. It also gives them the opportunity that if, uh, if they have any question, they, as as far as the fire chief has any question, they could get, literally go out and view what the burn is actually going to look like and have communication with uh, the individual that's going to have that burn for that day. Whether it's a prescribed burn, whether it's a, a burn pile, you know, there's a number of different things that might be looked at, may not be. Uh, that's totally up to the fire chief's discretion. More importantly is that when a passer buyer drives by and they see this big column of smoke and they dial 911, um, a, a 911 operator has to immediately dispatch a fire department. If they see smoke, they're going to send the proper uh, departments to whatever they, they have going on. Um, so they also, they as far as a dispatcher, has that capability of looking down the list saying, hey, we had a burn permit issued for this particular area. This is the address. So fire departments could also have that capability of going, Yes, this is the area. We'll check it out. If it's not, we're not going to put it out. But if it's not had a burn permit, and uh, one, if it's a individual that continues to burn without a burn permit, we might ask for the sheriff's office to come out and write a citation. And there are citations that are issued for burn permits. Uh, with that in mind, that uh, as I said earlier, you you are responsible for that fire. Gotcha. I think it's also important to let people know there's no charge for burn perm permits. Absolutely. It is, is a free service. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that, one, we know that the burn is going on. Uh, two, we want to make sure that we can uh, control it with the fact of weather. And that's going to be my next step as far as things to understand, is that weather plays a crucial role when we're dealing with open burns. Um, the last couple days here that we've had, we've been in what they call a red flag warning. A lot of people don't understand what a red flag warning is, but it's when all the science comes together and we have the heat for rising temperatures, we have very low humidity, we have very low dew points, and we have a higher wind. And when we say higher wind, anything 15 miles per hour or above could uh, initiate a red flag or a very high uh, fire danger. Uh, we're going to cut burn permits off that day. And for the reason is that the average human being, they can't run 20, 25 miles per hour. They have to uh, be able to control that fire. And if that fire is getting away from them, they're not going to be able to be out there with their tools trying to catch up with it. That is the time, regardless if you had a permit or not, you need to call 911 before it, it causes more property damage. So the weather changes. You know, it might, it, even though that it's raining, this morning here, um, if rain stops, we have the sun has the capability of coming out. It only takes one hour for it to dry the ground off enough to be able to start a fire. And I say that with the fact that um, we have what we call one hour fuels, and that's our grasses that we have around here. Uh, they, they burn very rapidly, and they burn fast, and they burn hot. So when we're looking at uh, saying, well, it just rained yesterday, it's a beautiful day out today, and how can it be very high? It's because it's met that criteria of low humidity, low dew points, temperatures raised up enough, and then we have the winds to, to factor that in. 
you've shared a lot of really good information. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on? I, I think the one thing is that uh, I'm going to go back to the, the open burning of brush piles. Uh, when we look at brush piles, the fuel that you utilize when we got big logs and stuff like that, uh, you might start that at 8 o'clock in the morning. We want you to stay with that brush pile until it is out. And uh, when I say that it's out, if it goes out past dark, you need to contact your local fire chief and let them know that you have this brush fire, that uh, it's going to burn throughout the night, but you have people that's with it. I say that because the next day we need to be watching that weather of what it's going to do during the day of the burn and during the next few days after that. Because a brush pile, you know, depending on its size, it could burn for days. And then you start getting torches that burn off and their little embers fly off because of the winds. They'll start fires downstream that you didn't have any intention for that to burn. All right. We've covered a lot of really great information. Thanks for sitting down with me, and we'll talk to you soon. You bet. Thanks, Stephanie.